Now, the types of counsel that an individual has in a death penalty case is actually very important. Back in Chomsky in 1997, studied homicide trials in Georgia. They reported more than 20% of the defendants with appointed counsel. What does that mean? Appointed counsel is like, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you. So 20% of those defendants with an appointed uh, attorney, a public defender, were sentenced to death. Well, if the individual had private counsel, that means that they could afford an attorney on their own, less than 5% were sentenced to death. I like this little cartoon here. This is Lionel Hutz from The Simpsons. One of his quotes is, this is the greatest case of false advertising I've seen since I sued the movie The Never Ending Story. Now, when researchers have looked at trial attorneys appointed to represent people on Virginia's death row, those individuals were six times more likely to be the subject of bar, uh, dis like the bar, the uh, Virginia State Bar, were more likely to be subject of uh, bar disciplinary proceedings than other attorneys. So, unfortunately, the attorneys that are appointed to these death penalty cases don't seem to be very good attorneys. I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but on the whole, not very good. And that kind of makes sense. You can't afford an attorney. One is provided to you. It might not provide you with the best attorney. Now, these, this paragraph and this chart are kind of separate. I probably should have separated them out on different pages. But there's a huge racial bias that's involved in death sentencing. In Florida, the odds of a death sentence are 4.8 times higher when a victim is white. If we look at plea agreements in death penalty cases, so they plea out to life in prison, an overwhelming number of the plea agreements are with white defendants. Now federally, if we look at the discrepancy between white defendants and black defendants, so and the racial background of the victim, if we look at a white victim here and a white victim here, the um, recommendation for seeking the death penalty is very similar. So if a white person kills a white person, the recommendation of seeking the death penalty is about 37%. If a black person kills a white person, the recommendation of seeking the death penalty is about 36%. So the odds are higher. Where we see the big difference though, if a white defendant kills a black victim, 35% seeking the death penalty. That's, that's good. I mean, it's almost the same. I mean, it's a little bit lower, but there's not a huge difference between those numbers. The striking category is here. When a black defendant kills a black victim, like black on black crime, some of you might not like that term, um, they only recommend to seek the death penalty in 20% of the cases. So here you might see a devaluing of the black victims when there is a black perpetrator. If we look at the race of defendants in cases which the federal death penalty was sought, overwhelmingly black. And the race of federal death row inmates, unfortunately again, overwhelmingly black. Um, in the state of Florida, if you look at the uh, ethnic background of the inmates on death row in Florida, we have a high percentage of white individuals that are on death row in Florida. Now, we have this unique opportunity to look at states that have the death penalty and states that do not have the death penalty. 
because we've got both in this country. So if we look at the murder rates in death penalty states versus non-death penalty states, the green bar is our death penalty states. The light green bar is non-death penalty states. And you can see, historically, since the 90s, the death penalty states have higher murder rates. So it doesn't, the death penalty doesn't seem to be deterring crime in, uh, in death penalty states versus non-death penalty states. States without the death penalty actually have better records on homicide rates. So the New York Times did a survey in 2000 and they found the states without death penalty have lower homicide rates than the states with the death penalty, just like that chart you saw. 10 of the 12 states without the death penalty have homicide rates below the national average, whereas half of the states with the death penalty have homicide rates above. During the last 20 years, the homicide rate in states with the death penalty has been 48 to 101 percent higher than in states without the death penalty. That's kind of counterintuitive. If the death penalty deters crime, why do the death penalty states have higher crime rates? Now, just in 2002, the U.S. Supreme Court, in the Atkins v. Virginia case, ruled that the execution of mentally retarded people was illegal. In a 6-3 to three decision, the judges decided that executing the mentally retarded was illegal because it violated the constitutional Eighth Amendment um, prohibiting cruel and unusual punishment. So it wasn't until uh, nine years ago that in the U.S. we outlawed the execution of mentally retarded people. Unfortunately, I think this still happens. So John Cooley is a good example. She, he, he was an um, individual that kidnapped, raped, and murdered Jessica uh, Lunsford. Horrific crime. You might remember that. That happened here in Florida. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy's guilty. And I don't really want him walking around on the streets. But if we look at um, the evidence in the case, and we look at this guy's IQ, um, his IQ is in the mentally retarded range. So this means that he should be spared the death penalty and given a life sentence. Um, uh, if you have an IQ of under 70, that's considered mentally retarded. But he was sentenced to death. So um, even though we have these laws on the books, it doesn't necessarily mean that. And what they did was they, they hired a number of psychologists to come in and do evaluations, and they said that um, he didn't have impairment in uh, activities of daily living, stuff like that. So as of the first of this month, in the state of Florida, we had 399 inmates on death row. Um, the one that's been there the longest was sentenced to death on 19, in 1974, I think. 72 or, in 1974. I think that's right. I better double check that. But still, that means that that individual was sentenced to death before I was even born. I mean, I was born right about then. So, um, Florida administers execution by electric chair or lethal injection, and lethal injection became an option for death row inmates in the state of Florida in 1999. We have had a little hiatus in executions to reevaluate the procedures for um, execution in the state. Florida, if we look at this chart, and this is from uh, 2002 to 2007. What I'm interested in here is the removal of individuals from death row. 
and historically, Florida has had very, very high levels of removals from death row. So in uh, 2006, 2007, six individuals were removed from death row. In 2005, 2006, 11. And in 2006, 2007, there were four executions. Unfortunately, if we really look at the data of Florida compared to the rest of the country, five of the 15 counties in the United States that impose the death penalty most frequently are in Florida. We are in a handful of states that are at the highest risk for handling down wrongful convictions. More people have been removed from Florida's death row following findings that they were not guilty than in any other state in the country. You thought it'd be Texas, right? So we've got a problem with death row, uh, especially in Florida. So what are those factors that lead to wrongful convictions and death penalty cases? And a lot of stuff we've talked about, um, false confessions and mistaken eyewitness testimony have a lot to do with this. So we know now that those things can be prevented. And when we look at the other factors involved with the death penalty, like saving the state's money, unfortunately that doesn't really seem to be true. Deterring crime doesn't necessarily seem to be true either. So we've got a problem especially when you throw in there the wrongful convictions. Uh, I, again, I don't, I'm not here to get you to decide whether the death penalty should be used or banned or whatever. I just want you to know some facts um, in regarding the uh, death penalty in the United States and specifically in Florida.